have died and gone to hell. What's up, Internet? It's me, Kyo Killa, and today I'm reviewing Alan Wake Remastered. Let's get started. Alan Wake Remastered is a survival horror slash psychological adventure game in which you play the role of a famous writer and man who has a hard time with math. Like a time capsule from the 60s. Alan Wake, as he struggles to figure out what's happened to his missing wife. It's a game that's dripping with atmosphere, from foggy Pacific Northwest forests and cabins, to its use of light as both a thematic element and visual set piece, to the mostly movie quality sound design and dialogue. The story, narrated by Alan himself as you play, gives it a noir, television, thriller, slash mystery vibe that meshes with the atmosphere and gameplay, which is more Twin Peaks than it is Resident Evil. It was that way when it dropped 11 years ago, and all of that is faithfully recreated, save for enhanced lighting and new, fancier textures, as well as what I assume are enhanced and or remastered audio mixing. But what has also been faithfully recreated is the fun at first but samesy combat in which you'll shine lights at baddies, obliterate them in cinematic Remedy Max Payne slow-mo with your weapon of choice, and get dramatically out of breath while running. <sighs> Let's dive in a little more. I'll try not to reveal major spoilers and use early game footage to prevent doing so as much as possible. The textures have been updated and for the most part look great. I say for the most part because these appear to be just retextured models from a game that launched as an Xbox 360 exclusive in 2010. And that age shows. The clothes look better, faces have more pores, and characters have more realistic hair. But no amount of pretty layers can cover up faux animatronic Stepford clunkers from an era gone by. <laughs> that being said, as you get into the game, you can almost be convinced that you're playing a modern game because of the absolutely beautiful updated lighting and color palette. The contrast range is much better, and it feels like this is how they envisioned the game when they made it originally. Scenes like this are even more haunting with the newfangled lighting, and I have a feeling that with this remaster, they wanted to focus on that because, let's be honest, you're playing a game about a moody author who's where's rachel in his way through a dark and foreboding version version of the Pacific Northwest. You're just here for the light show. The gameplay revolves around using light sources as a weapon to weaken your enemies, known as Taken, so that you can cinematically dust them with a weapon over and over and over again. With occasional quick time interactions that mostly serve as breaks in the monotony of light blasting shadow people to do things like turn on engines and make strange public love to jukeboxes. But this gameplay simultaneously served as what feels like repetitive filler to elongate the game and as a shuttle that ushers you through the story. It also gives you, protagonist Alan Wake, a way to physically and metaphorically deal with your problems. Nah. Writer stuff. Fuck off, Stucky! The audio design was great when the game launched, and when I recorded some footage from the original 360 version, I definitely noticed that the remaster had remixed, or at the very least, boosted audio mixing. The music was more vibrant, the unsettling underlying tones reverberated more in my headphones, and the general audio was more elevated and less muddled. It could just be the compression difference in the 360 versus a modern console, but I'll take what I can get. I would also argue that the music and overall audio presentation is movie studio quality and certainly helps elevate the game to some of its cinematic heights. The story and plot are great, and really, besides the atmospheric lighting and audio design, they are the reason Alan Wake is revered and held in cult-like status, and thematically and cinematically hold up today. It plays out in distinct acts, which are labeled episodes here, and with Wake's expository narration, both in general and in manuscript pages you find, you're pulled into the mind of a writer, which I love and greatly appreciate. And when you combine all these factors, the palpable atmosphere and lighting with some janky robotic animations, set-piece locations that look great from a distance, fun but monotonous gameplay, stellar sound design, and purposefully expository dialogue from a dark and moody author who's fond of similes. It was bleeding shadows like ink underwater, 
like a cloud of blood from a shark bite. You get all the things that made the game special and charming back in 2010, enhanced by better contrast okay. and lighting, with all the things that make it feel like a clunky 2010 thriller today. The story and cinematic moods are the reason to play this game, and if you haven't played it before, this is definitely the version of the game you want to play. If you have played it before and were a fan, the scary moments feel scarier with better audio and lighting enhancements, and you get the entire game remastered with both the Signal and the Writer DLC for $30 USD, as well as audio commentary from the original writer and director, and the QR codes from the PC version, and probably some other stuff that I don't know about. Would I recommend this game? So yes. If you're new to Alan Wake Again, and you're willing to allow the visuals to wash over you on the surface without trying to peel back the paint and focus on the stellar story and atmosphere, I'd say it's definitely worth your time and money if what you've seen checks enough boxes. I think a lot of people missed this game because it was an Xbox 360 exclusive, but if you're into horror, this is definitely your jam. And for those that have already played it, it's up to you whether you want to visit a deeper, darker ocean green or to its ports you've already been. <laughs> References. Thank you so much for watching. Whether you've subscribed or not, you are amazing as always. I'll see you next time. Later!